Hello everyone, how's it going? Okay. As you can see, for uh, the last hours of the forum, they have taken on a light subject like how do AI models understand truth? So let's just start with a quick question. How many of you in this room have already used Google today? How many of you? Cell phone, laptop, wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I do it all the time, right? That's the reason why Google has become this absolute massive gatekeeper of information for the last 20 years. Because, yeah, of course we have, you know, chats with our neighbors and we read the paper, but most of the time when we do have a question, the first thing we do is Google it. So for the last, I don't, actually, I think Google today is starting 27. I was gonna say congratulations, Google, but I will leave it for later. So this is what we have been getting more or less for the last 27 years. We could, you know, type something into the search box, our question, and this is what we get. A list, a ranked list of blue links with what Google thought would be sources for our question to, you know, the very good knowledge that Google thought we could get if we clicked on those blue links perfectly identified with the source on top, in this case, Healthline and Medical News Today. This was obviously yesterday. We all know today, if you do this, most of the time, this is what you are getting, you know? An AI overview, which is basically telling Google, please do a summary of what you think is the best knowledge available about my question and present it to me in a neat paragraph. How Google does it? Well, that's an interesting question for us today. What we do know is that the blue link era is dying and we are entering a new space. And I don't know about you, but for me, this is nothing short of a complete revolution and overhaul or the, of the way we acquire information. And it's gonna have huge repercussions, right? I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Carlos. I work for this nonprofit that is called Maldita.es. It fights for information integrity and against disinformation in the whole world, but we are based in Spain. I'm actually that old, bald, 40-something in among all these young, very bright people. And I am here basically in IMED, thanks, by the way, to IMED for the invitation, to share an obsession with all of you. And my obsession is that we are entering this new era and we know next to nothing about how these AI summaries are created. We might think we know a little bit, but we really, I have been studying this for a couple of years and I don't know much about, you know, the actual entanglements of it, like the ethical choices, like the people programming this, these massive corporations, are they having things in mind like how minority opinions play into these summaries? How, um, what sources they should be used? How do you improve the quality of your information? And I think this is crucial because for the next years, this is gonna be the way most of the world's most pressing questions are responded for the people. Some of them are gonna be silly, like you know, what time uh, this game is uh, being broadcast on television, but some of them are gonna be pretty influential, like you know, which party represents me better for the next election? So I think we should pay a little attention to how these answers are produced. Which brings me to my favorite comparison, which is the huge harvester that goes through the internet. This is the first step for every model that is out there, Google's or anyone else, to have that kind of model powering those answers that we saw. We need to have this massive harvester going through the internet thousands of them, several times a day, reading absolutely everything. You know, that silly blog that you used to have in college that you abandoned in 2009, but it's still online, and the papers, and social media posts, whatever. You have these crawlers that are reading everything that is out there, basically because it's the only way that those companies can produce the models that are gonna be able to respond to such a massive variety of questions. They need to read the whole internet before they are able to do this. And this is gonna 
I'm going to be coming back to this question because it's the explanation for the bees. Okay, what's the bees? A few months ago, someone Googled bees in my computer and received this wonderful absolute jewel of a reply by Google Gemini, which is bees have been present in desktop computers since mid-2000s, but a microscopic level. They are used to perform basic calculations in the CPU. So not only you have bees in your computers, they are also super smart, apparently, or smart enough to do basic calculations at the CPU. So, you know, every time this happens, and this happens on a daily basis, these companies are going to say, are going to label this a hallucination and move on. But I think it's worth looking into how these things happen and why they happen. In this case, we have been able to trace back this instance to this article by Hive Systems. It's a perfectly legit American cybersecurity company, and they do have this article online. It's called, This Major Vulnerability Could Fill Your Computer With Bees. Weird, right? You look into the article, and there is all level of details, and particularly the exact same words Google has put in front of that user, which is this breed of Apis Arithmetican. They, they have a name now, and also a nice gesture towards ancient Greece in Arithmetican, was especially bred to carry out basic computations in the CPU. And they have even graphics to explain to you how your computer works thanks to this microscopic beast that lives inside of it. Okay, this was surprising. But that might be a little hint of why this ended up on Google. And this is a hint. This article was originally published on April 1, 2021, which for all of you who don't know, it's April Fool's in the US, the, you know, the date where Americans play practical jokes on each other. So, you know, the company's called The Hive, and, and you know, a joke about this, ha, ha, ha. And then a few months later, a few years later, this ends up being on Google Gemini. But this tells us a lot of what we need to know about how those answers get produced. You know, and in the case of, to be honest, in the case of, you know, a joke about bees, it's not that relevant, but it could get relevant really quick as we're gonna see. The thing is, what happened here, obviously, is that when asked about bees, the model didn't have a lot of training to deal with this kind of question because not many people search for a stuff or write about stuff like bees in a computer. It's pretty specific, right? So the model gave you the best it had because these models, as our own bodies, are what they eat. They cannot go much farther than that, right? As I said, the bees example is innocuous, but obviously, there might be another examples of model manipulation that are not as innocuous. There is ongoing research about how several actors are trying to basically produce trillions and trillions of websites in the hope that that massive crawler, that massive harvester going through the internet picks them up and they are able to change the output of the models so they can get on the first result of Google Gemini. If you, this is massively important, why? Because as you remember, um, all of us, we rarely go beyond maybe the first result in Google, and now like maybe 99% of the people would just read the generated AI summary and don't go beyond. So if you are able to position yourself, if you are, say, the Russian government, and you are able to put your propaganda there, is the best move you can do. So in this, we need to take a step back and think about the underlying question that I had, like how, how those models decide this is true and this is false, or more precisely, this is the piece of information that I am gonna feature. And I have a disappointment for you all, because after talking to engineers in top companies for the last two years, my response is, at the end of the day, is mostly about what is most prevalent, what is more abundant, what is more out there in the open web meaning that the most common version of a reply that it's on the internet is the most likely for these models to consider the truth. Now, if you think about it, there have been many times in history where the most common perception wasn't the truth, but it's even worse than that, in my opinion. These companies 
most of the time they will give you the wrong answer if on the internet is the most common answer. If we think about it carefully, this is all the more concerning these days because in the current internet we are all living in, there are only two things that can stop these massive harvesters, the crawlers for the AI systems, from taking stuff. First of all is paywalls. You know, the crawler wants to read the Financial Times, like myself, but they don't pay, and they cannot see behind the curtain, behind the paywall. And the second thing you can do if you have a domain you have probably done, is to put a robot TXT in your domain telling crawlers, stop, do not scrape my site. Those are basically the only two ways for those models not to train on your site. Now, if you think about it, in this world where those models are responding questions with whatever is most common, the best of information is less and less common because it's less and less accessible. Because the Financial Times and the, you know, the scientific articles in the journals and the best sources available are less and less available for these crawlers. So basically, the entitification of the internet is having a very concrete effect on this. Can you blame them? Of course not. Like we all know, you know, these tech companies basically destroy the ad business for the media, and then they use their staff to train their models and they offer no payments. And now they have these AI summaries that basically are destroying any traffic coming for search. So I don't blame clearly the media outlets or, uh, or, or the scientific journals for putting a paywall and, or, or otherwise blocking those crawlers for using their stuff. But this is going to have huge repercussions in the quality of these answers we have been seeing in the AI, Gemini, uh, ChatGPT, or whatever. Because when they choose also, they, 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 have another, they have another way. They could decide they want to use sources and they want to prioritize quality sources and pay for them. But that, let's be honest, hasn't been the way these tech companies have behaved in the past. Actually, if you make this question to ChatGPT in the model everyone has access to, the public model without registering or anything, you ask, are journalists biased? And you receive this answer. It's not, it's not entirely wrong. Like, yeah, journalists can be biased. There is human nature and bias. But you see absolutely no sources. And this has been the way generative AI companies have wanted it for a long time. Why? Because if you don't list sources, it's much less likely that those sources sue you for breaking copyright in the future. So there has been kind of a trade-off, because at the same time, sometimes you want to use sources, because if you are ChatGPT, if you put wrong information out there, you are responsible, but if you list sources that are shitty, then the shitty sources become responsible. So this is kind of a trade-off. Most of them are trying to give you some sources, and particularly those who work or who want to be prepared for users asking about current events. Obviously, ChatGPT has no way of responding what Trump said yesterday at the UN, if not by scraping on your real time the media. And this is a huge importance for the media to be present in these models, and a good question on why these models are not partnering with media for the most part. So, this content is more and more important in this world, and yet these companies are disengaging in more and more from quality content. Why? Well, mostly because if they recognize there are better sources, then they need to pay for carrying their content. So, there is kind of a philosophical idea of not to pick sources, because that is expensive, that is worse for the for the, for the business. So when they go with the crawlers, they still mostly go to produce their replies. They still go for what's most common most of the time. Google is a good example on this, because Google is the only one who is telling us a little bit about where those responses come from. So they say, no, that paragraph is coming from an, the same links that we used to use. Then again, those rank links, blue links, used to be shitty also in the past many times. So that is not at all something that should give us any, any warranties. Actually, it's even worse if you 
are Greek, for example. Actually, if you speak any language other than English, because if you see, if you Google food cures cancer in English, you get this wonderful reply citing quality sources like the MD Anderson Cancer Center, and you get a, a food cures cancer, you get a great reply, which is no, it doesn't. It might help you prevent it, but it won't cure you. However, if you ask this in Spanish, you will get very tasty food to combat cancer. This is the world we live in these days. And we haven't even talked about how these companies will introduce advertising, because they will. We have already talked about how they are a little bit like bottom, bottom feeders, these fish that only eats the rubbish that is in the floor. Not even getting into the fact that the US government is actually pushing them to have particular ideological outputs. So there is many questions. What the hell we, do we do about it? Well, first of all, transparency. We need to know much more about how they deal with these questions. Second, we need to make sure they make the tough choices of selecting sources and make sure that medical advice for medical queries goes on top of whatever my blog says. We need red teaming for, from journalists that can test the volume of the systems, they can test the prompts, they can ask tough questions. And of course, we need for these companies to be much more public about what they do, how they are addressing these risks, how they have concrete plans to prevent the awful outcomes that are already happening. Thanks a lot for being here with me. I'm on the email for whatever you need. <laughs>